Hello, friends, and welcome back to Magical Christmas Land, as some people would say, where you get to cast Nissa into Gideon every game. And uh... oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, is, is somebody well played, a little salty? Well played, sir. Those were intense, well thought well, battles. I would say welcome to the Pro Tour, but um, oh, I guess oh. I can't. So for those of you that missed <laughs> it uh, in chat before the match started, Daddy Chion's <laughs> like. Oh, I would you know, something about oh, you have a bad uh, record versus old Asian men, and um, I yes. grant free Albuquerque. His <laughs> his one of his friends beat me for a winning it in top eight, yes. and here we are. Yeah, one of my best friends is about uh, is forty years old, <laughs> and uh, and uh, they, yeah, it was a winning in. It was for the eighth seat at Grand Prix Albuquerque, and uh, Numat died to his own triskaidekaphobia in game. I won game one with it though. You did. That was a sweet win. I was just like, oh my god, this is going to be intense. But anyways, yeah, I, I, I know that you had um, Ruinous Path in your deck. So every time I just jam my Planeswalker, I was just like, well, I really hope you don't play it. And every, every time you just played like the least effective spell I could imagine. <laughs> I'm assuming your hand was just terrible. <laughs> but game, game one, I, I drew a lot of bricks. Game two, you, you knew what happened. But uh... Yeah, yeah, you kept the lander. I mean, I kept the five lander. But it did have those two planeswalkers, so you know, I felt it's like I had to keep. Pretty good, pretty good curve, pretty good curve. <laughs> yeah. In in general, who do you think that uh, matchup favors? Well, um, you know, I I talked I talked to Luis, and I actually talked to some of the uh, the Pantheon guys, and I don't think the deck actually performed very well at the Pro Tour, and um, the you know according to the you know the face to face guys that I talked with, the green white deck is the real deal. I mean, it won the Pro Tour. Steve Rubin just completely crushed the top eight. You know, just three mm -hmm. one ing or, or 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 better in every round, and um, you know I got to play some games with it, and it's it's pretty awesome. It's very resilient. Uh, spot removal is just not very good against you. Yep. You know you have a, you know you have all these creatures that just yeah go ahead kill it. It doesn't matter. Then you have all your uh, you know, you have all your planeswalkers that generate a bunch of tokens, and then on top of that, you know when I play against a green black deck, if as long as you don't languish every single turn, like you can't actually deal with the Westville Abbey. You know, and that was, you know, we had a similar deck to the green black deck when we tested for the Pro Tour. And our biggest uh, problem was, well, how do you beat Westvale Abbey? And there was just no solution. And, uh, you know, that's kind of, that's kind of why we kind of went off the deck. Um, gotcha. And uh, that was just kind of my plan for, for, for all the games. Because I know you had a lot of removal. So I was just like, if I can just, <laughs> if I can just manage to just get a bunch of dorks onto the table in Westvale Abbey, you, I should be okay. I mean, I brought in Clip Wings, but, I, but that wasn't even necessary at that point, you know. It was... That would be pretty absurd. Yeah, Clip Wings is an answer. I mean, <laughs> I, have, I have a few other flares, but yes, Clip Wings is a, is a reasonable answer if I go all in on the Westvale Abbey. Yeah. Well, good matches uh, overall in general so far we've seen. Uh, in my practice, I was, I was completely dominating the green-white lists, so turns out uh, sometimes, sometimes you yeah. got to lose. Yeah, well, but, you know, maybe you got to step up your game once you kind of get to the next level. You got to, <laughs> you know, I, I, I can, I can hardly read. It's right there. It's right there. I, I see you look just, peering over the just, edge. You're like, you know, Hi. Ken, Kenji, Kenji, you're just one win away. You'll get there eventually. I believe. Right. I believe. I believe. All right, so let's take a look at the decks for the next round. We have Aaron Forsythe playing against Gabby Sparts. And we have Gabby Sparts on Mono White Humans. Now, this is a deck that, uh, you know, uh, a small part of our team actually chose to play at the Pro Tour. There are about four or five of us that played this. Craig Wesco, obviously. Uh, and Pat Cox actually went 8-2 and two with this deck. And, you know, of all the various White Weenie decks that we tried, we found that this was just the best version of the deck. You get to play 18 lands. Uh, you never really stumble. Um, you know, the problem with playing the other white weenie decks is you have a lot of lands that come into play tapped. But, uh, yeah, I mean, this deck just kills you so fast. I think this might be, like, the new mono red of the format. No, th this deck is completely awesome if people are looking at the creatures here. Look, Anafenza's 2, Anointer's 1, Dragon Hunter 1, Expedition Envoy 1. Like, everything in your deck is so freaking cheap. And then the four Athalia's Lieutenants pumping up your team can just yeah. lead to huge swings. I, I played against this deck a few times. Uh, in some leagues, and opponent was like, turn one anointer of champions. I'm like, oh, great, I'm playing against some brew. Instantly, yeah. you know, turn four, they're attacking me for 15 <laughs> no, or something. Great. I'm like, what's going on? Well, you know? Yeah, anointer's great. It, like, the thing is, you're deck playing a deck with three languish, but if you're on the draw, sometimes you just lose before you exactly. even get to cast the languish. Yeah. All right, so it looks like we're going to hop straight into our match. We have Aaron Forsyth against Gabby Sparts. Aaron Forsyth also uh, playing a brew. 
a Salt High Brew that went 8 and 2 at the Pro Tour. It's basically Green Black Splash Dragon Lord Silumgar. Oh. Oh. <laughs> All right. Let's head on over to this round four. Here we are, friends, for the fourth round here of the Community Super League. We have Aaron Forsyth versus Gabby Sparts. Aaron on the bottom with Sultai Midrange. I know you guys didn't get a chance to look at his hand. And Gabby on top with the Mono White Humans. Look at these hands, Paul. Yeah, I mean, th this is just an excellent example of just what the White Weenie deck does. If you have two planes in your opening hand, almost all your hands are going to look exactly the same. It's just all one drops, all beaters. But the thing is, you can also go over to the top. You have Griff Spoon, you have Always Watching, you have Thali's Lieutenant. You just have so many ways to pump up your team. Um, which is kind of what, you know, what makes this deck so great. I mean, this deck has some weaknesses, a lot of sweepers, but it doesn't look like Aaron Forsythe's uh, main deck configuration has too many of those. Yeah, Aaron's hand is unfortunate, <laughs> very, very unfortunate. He's going to need to mulligan this for sure. His only land in hand is a Blighted Fend, which cannot currently produce the colors he needs. Gabby's got a great start. She has a turn one drop into potentially, you know, a turn three Kithian flip, transform. So Yeah, yeah. I I mean, I'm looking at this main deck, and uh, you know, there are, there are a few languages main deck, but I mean, this at least game one. I feel I feel like the white Winnie deck is uh, likely favored here. Maybe after cyborg, things change a little bit. We'll have to see if. Uh oh, Aaron oh, on God. the Mulligan to five 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 got mono lands. I think that's a quagmire that he. Probably Were you spamming five or something? What's going on here? I, I, I might have done that to you, but then you, you said <laughs> sneak. Both you were yeah, like, I, I did snap keep. It, it was a sneak. So, you know. Anyways. Did you like it when I attacked you with my plants? Oh, I loved it. I oh, loved yeah. it. Well, you got to send a message sometimes. So, <laughs> message was delivered. So, what do you think about Aaron's hand here? I think Aaron is <laughs> probably a 95% favorite over Gabby's like 15% to win. Oh, oh, well, you know, the third Evolving Wilds, that might swing the game though. <laughs> right? He, he can cast his Dragon Lord Silmagar now. That, that is pretty good. I think this Blighted Fen is also going to do some major work for Aaron. Uh, <laughs> should he ever be able to cast it? Or, I mean, it's going to do blood. work. I don't oh, know. yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, Gabby just, once again, I mean, the thing is, if you look at Gabby's hand, she doesn't even have um, any of, like, kind of the, the anthem effects in her hand. Mm -hmm. She doesn't have the always watching. She doesn't have the Thali's Lieutenant. Those are kind of the cards that allow you to go out, you know, get these explosive starts. But, I mean, against Aaron Star, like, you know, you, you could win with a ham sandwich. It doesn't really matter. Uh, plenty of people have won with ham sandwiches before. Looks like Gabby's going to opt to go now. for the, uh, <laughs> the Griff Spoon. Uh, I'll buy you a pizza if you eat a ham sandwich right now. We can, uh, Ooh, we can geez. maybe some. You know, I, I'm I'm good with having people order pizzas for me at my house. I'm that's I'm I'm trying to after this last pro tour, I'm trying to trim down a little bit. So we're we're gonna keep the mukbanging to a minimum. Okay, how about how about like a meatloaf then? Because uh, a meatloaf like just just pure protein. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sure, that should be okay. That's what that's what Gabby is currently turning turning Aaron <laughs> into with uh, her draw. <laughs> Ugh. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean. Looks like, you know, G Gabby drew a couple of lands, which is generally really bad. Uh, you don't really want to draw four lands in this deck. That's why it's got 18. But, I mean, <laughs> Aaron's got absolutely nothing here. So, yeah, there's just, th at this point, there's just, I don't think anything he can draw to get out of this. I remember Aaron saying that he had the good version of the green-black deck when we were uh, <laughs> drafting these decks, by the way. Yeah, I think he chose the sweetest version, which I can give him, like... You know, you, you are playing, uh, like I said, when we test, we did have a, a Jund Delirium deck with Goblin Dark Dweller, Traversy, Overwall, etc. And this seems to be kind of very similar to that, except it's choosing to play blue for Dragon Lord Silver. That's the only blue card in the deck. Oh, Gabby's so unlucky. When she casts this Knight of the White Orchid, she's not going to be able to get a land with it. Yeah, I mean, that is pretty unreal. And she drew Declaration, there's no creatures on the board. Oh, well, she can Declaration the Dragon Hunter and get two clues. Oh, that's value. Right? Yeah. If she wasn't you, just killing Aaron on turn four here. I think here. she's going to go for it. It's a, it's a bold move. So <laughs> I'm not sure. Uh, all right, so all right. I, I think Gabby's not going to play this night because she wants to play around Languish. Although it doesn't matter because there's a Gideon in play. Yes, that's true. Yeah. 
No, Lanamore wastes a good choice for Aaron on the. I think he wants <laughs> to cast a double green spell next turn. Should he draw one? He should just to send a message. All right, another land. Uh, the only thing Aaron's going to be traversing here is his sideboard as we probably go to game two. Yeah, these matches are going pretty fast. I mean, it's probably not going to be as fast as the last match, but still. I was waiting for it. I was waiting for it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, traverse the Uvenwald for an island. Got to get a little bit extra camera time, after all. You know, they do say that island is the best card in Magic. It, I, I mean, I'm a big fan of islands, so. Aaron should just build a moat. <laughs> wow. Opted not to do so. And Gabby <laughs> takes the first game in swimming colors. You know, that's very reminiscent of a previous previous match that I was uh, a part of, actually. Yeah, yeah. I mean, th that, was, that was just a total beating. I mean, that wasn't, you know, Aaron really didn't get to sh showcase what his deck's trying to do. So, you know, l l let's see what happens after sideboard. Um, you know, pulling up uh, Aaron's sideboard here. What do you think he's going to be looking to bring in here? Well, I can barely see the cards, but uh, it looks like we have a lot of removal spells. I see dead weight. I don't think he's bringing in virulent plague. Oh man, he has seasons past in the sideboard. I guess I could be yeah, looking at the deck list I, too. I, I, yeah, I don't think seasons past is coming in here, but I, I think it's just going to be mono removal. It looks like they have yeah. So there's three languishes, a flame tendrils, which is okay on the play. It's actually not even that great on the draw, just Especially because if you. Yeah, with all the Anthem effects. Yeah. Um, that uh, should be scary. Yeah, he doesn't actually have too much. I mean, I mean, he's got a dead weight and a Flame Tendrils, and that's about it. He, and an ultimate price. He's not really bringing in a whole... Like, he's bringing in a Conclave Naturalist. So, I, I, you would think that, you know, when you're trying to prepare against White Weenie deck, you, you, you would have more options in the sideboard for the matchup, but, I mean, we don't really oh. see a real match there. I like how we always go to what would the deck that just lost bring in, or what would the deck that you know probably has a bad matchup well, here bring in? G Gabby just has the same deck. I mean, I I don't even know exactly. Like she probably just doesn't even need the sideboard. She uh, has I uh, could, three Gideons in the sideboard. Yeah, I could see doing that because you know people tend to bring in more sweepers. But Aaron didn't really have additional sweepers. He just had those three. I guess he had the flame tendrils, but. I, I, I guess Gabby could bring in the Gideons along with the 19th planes and take out some random ones. Yeah. All right, here we are for game two, guys, between Aaron Forsyth and Gabby Sparts. Aaron's on the play. His hand is much better. He actually has things to do. He can do stuff. Yeah, and in fact, Gabby's hand is looking quite poor in comparison to her last hand. Uh, oh, which, well, another so one drop, so that's, that's pretty good. Not bad here, not bad, certainly. Yeah, it looks like Gabby's going to just try to flood the board, uh, flip the, uh, the Gossip Monger end of turn, and then kind of reevaluate after, you know, depending on what Aaron does here. Looks like Gabby did bring in those Gideons. I would assume an extra land as well. There is a land in the sideboard of that deck. Right, right. Well, you're playing 18 lands, and when you're, trying to bring, you're bringing in a bunch of 4-drops, you can't really play 18 lands and 3 Gideons after the sideboard. Or I guess you could, but you'd be a maniac. <laughs> All right. Aaron, I do like that. I, I, yeah, I, you know, I do like Ultimate Price, because obviously like, you, get, you, know, you, can, you can use it on a Grisboon creature, but I like saving... The, the ruinous path because you know Aaron has to be mindful that Gabby could bring in Gideon uh, yep. Ally of Zendikar out of the sideboard. Definitely. Looks like Gabby's probably just going to bounce off the Sylvan Advocate here with the Town Gossip Monger. Transformerino. Re representing the pump spell here. <laughs> What's he got? Giant Growth. That's in the format, right? Epic Confrontation. Is Ooh. It, is that the, yeah, that'd be, that'd be sweet. But that's uncastable, Paul. Jeez, Kenji one, Paul zero. Oh. Oh, well, yeah, you 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 got me. Yes. <laughs> Wait, wouldn't it? it just be you tying it up? Because I no, I, <clears throat> I, yeah. I already heard it. <clears throat> oh right, right, right. Okay. Mark it down, chat. <laughs> Do you like uh, the lieutenant here, or going with the declaration this early? Well, if Gabby goes for the lieutenant, um, she can swing for six, I guess. Yeah, Lieutenant here seems better. This lets the Gossip Monger attack, or at least the, uh, the mob yeah, yeah. attack in now. Right. One of them gets in, and at this point, like, he's, she's basically putting pressure on Eren to, make, to have the Languish here. Mm -hmm. And if he doesn't, he's just in a lot of trouble. 
and even after a language, Gabby has an awesome play afterwards, right? I mean, she gets to just jam a Gideon right afterwards. So in this matchup, would you prefer to keep Gideon a creature and just keep producing threats and attacking with it, or would you immediately Anthem? Um, I probably wouldn't look to Anthem. You probably want to, you know, I mean, a lot of times it just kind of depends on the board. But, um, yeah, I mean, obviously Ruinous Path is a thing, but, you know... Um, you know, like if she if she's if she's if she, obviously if Aaron just like plays a language here he's just she's just gonna start pumping out tokens. Mm -hmm. But I do like I do like you know you know once once you are in a good position to I like plusing it then trying to anthem because then you can still start making tokens out of it. All right. Notably, Aaron has three card types in his graveyard. He does that up traverse the uh, oval wall in his hand. So delirium ever closer. In fact, if he just casts the ruinous path, he'll be able to uh, full value the traverse. Yeah, I wonder what what's like the best. Let me take a look here. Let's try to figure out what's the best creature to get. I'm going uh, Kalidus. Kalidus, maybe? yeah, I think so. Yeah. It looked Another like he boarded out. Draw. Yeah, it looked like he boarded out the Dragonlord Silumgar. So there really aren't too many great targets. I think it's just the Kalidus. Mm -hmm. Kalidus turning into stone. A little bit flavorful. He is a vampire after all. If you guys keep up with the magic storyline. <laughs> would recommend before, reading it before every pro tour Sam Party as a way to kind of cool down after weeks of testing does spend the entire night before the pro tour reading um, on the lore oh just going through whatever. the entire one for yeah, the just, uh, just, new just set just what, what, whatever it is for the new <laughs> set yeah so I always go up to him and be like hey so what's happening on Innistrad yeah uh, so yeah I do like this ruinous path play I mean obviously th there's a risk that Gabby just plays a Gideon here but you know Aaron wants to put something on the board Mm -hmm. and use his mana in the most efficient manner. So this allows him to actually go search for a creature. And it looks oh. like he's getting a Den Protector. Well, a wise maneuver. This will let him get back the Ruinous Path after Gabby casts the Gideon. But that means Gideon will be on the battlefield for, what, two turns? Or at least two activations. Right, right, right. Yeah, and this is kind of why we, when we were kind of going over the... Um, when we were building this deck, we built it with Goblin Dark Dwellers, and we added red because... You get to get that that you know the instant value. Just play the Dark Dwellers, then you can get your removal spells. Then Protector a little slow. All right, not a bad draw here for Aaron. Yeah. It looks like Aaron here is going to you know play the Den Protector face down, and um, you know when you unmorph the Den Protector, it allows you to get any spell from your graveyard back to your hand, and um, it looks like uh oh okay okay so it looks like Aaron, yeah. Gabby knows, or if she's looking at the deck lists, which we've had access to, she knows that that's Den Protector. Uh, if right. she wants a declaration in stone that to get rid of it so that Aaron can't get back Runa's path, that would keep Gideon alive. Yeah, I mean, that's, that seems like a pretty good option here. I mean, Sylvan Advocate is also one land away from becoming a 4-5, uh, so that's also a consideration. But, you know, Aaron only has one card in hand, and Gideon is a huge problem, so... As, you know, if Gabby, uh, if Gabby just wants that Gideon to stay on the board, I think you know the correct play is to Declaration in Stone and uh, Exile the Morph. I think the main thing here is that Aaron's only taken one damage, and it's yeah. 5 as opposed to the 20-plus that he had taken at this point in the previous game. This would be a great spot to draw Seasons Past. <laughs> <laughs> it would, wouldn't it? <laughs> Let's see. Ultimate Price, Land, Ruinous Path, Traverse, which would get you know another uh, Den Protector or Creature or whatever. Oh, actually, no, it wouldn't anymore. You'd lose Delirium. All right, Gabby getting aggro here. All right. Languish would be a fairly awesome draw here, because uh, Eren could go land into Languish and have the Advocate survive. Mm -hmm. All right. Full value, Knight of the White Orchid. Do you think Gabby just drops her entire hand here? Like, sandbagging a, th a Thraben Inspector doesn't seem like it does a whole lot. Oh no, I think she wants to just get it down. Then she can use yeah. the clue and have a little bit more mana next turn. Right. And you know, even if even if Aaron has Languish, she uh Aaron can't kill Gideon. Yeah, not this turn. Although I don't I, like the Sylvan Advocates can't attack very well currently. Yeah. Uh and the the uh, the Death Touch um the Hissing Quagmire also can't attack because of the uh, the first strike from the Knight of the White Orchid. So I think I would just cash into Clue here. Yep. And just uh, see what I draw. Right, you still can make the same exact plays with no 
change in mana to, to use the Hissing right. Quagmire, which can activate into a 2-2 two -two Death Touch for a black, green, and a colorless. Double Sylvan Advocate's pretty good. Of course, Aaron has six lands now, so all of his land creatures are going to get plus two, plus two. Yeah, I think I would cash into clue here. Uh, big reason being you, you might draw just another copy of Ruinous Path, and you really do need to deal with that Gideon. Because once the Gideon gets off the table, Aaron isn't actually looking that bad. Mm -hmm. He's going to have two Sylvan Advocates. I guess he has a six land, so um, the, um, the uh, Hissing Quagmire is actually a 4-4. Four -four. Right, right, right. But base level, it's a 2-2. Two -two. Yeah, yeah. As are we. <laughs> Gabby's just like, I call. Snap call. Show me what you're working with. And actually, this is not too good for Aaron. He can kill the yeah. knight and the 2-2, two -two, or the lieutenant by itself. This is actually a decent block, because even if Aaron had an ultimate price, Gabby would still be getting rid of a Sylvan Advocate here. Because even if he ultimate priced the, highest, the biggest creature on the board, which is a 3-3 three -three lieutenant... Uh, there's still going to be five power to, um, to kill the advocate. So many pog champs. So many pog champs in chat right now. <laughs> I still like this. this just the snap quad block. It's just like, yep. Show me what you got. Yeah, sh show me what you're working with. Well, it, even if Aaron had what an ultimate price, Gabby would still be killing it. Yeah. Yes. I ran the numbers. Don't worry. I was grounded for three years. I, I had a lot of time to, to, to run some numbers during that, is that time. Is that how you draw lands? Keeping a two-lander? Uh, yeah, well, first of all, like keeping two landers and not drawing a third land, that's something that I recommend you not to do. Um, but, but I'm saying, you, it, you did the math. If, if you do the math, will I draw my third land? No, no, no. You just should have just known. Oh. Ah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Ah. Uh, now, that, now that that's clear. All right, <laughs> all so right. What is Aaron getting here? Traverse was actually a pretty good draw off the clue. Yeah, for sure. It allows him to cast out everything else. Uh, I mean, again, I would have just gotten uh, Kalidus like the last time. Well, maybe he gets he gets another Den Protector. Yeah, with Gabby empty-handed. Yeah. That would make sense. And Gabby's deck, what, is our Declaration the only removal spells? Or I guess uh, no. Yeah, yeah, it's it's playing four declarations, and if you look at Aaron's deck, it's just it does have a ton of creatures, so mm -hmm. I think it is correct to keep in all the removal. I'm actually curious what she boarded out. Probably just random one drops. I don't even know. I guess you oh. could take out Knight of the White Oak oh. the play. <laughs> oh, hey, 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 what's up? Gee, what is oh. going on? Well, they're kind of like siege rhinos. Like when you draw one, you just draw three. Wait, wait, wait. Was were you on the top screen or the bottom screen for our match? I have no idea. You were on the top. Uh, our producer says you were on the top. I think I'm finding out. Remember? And, and, um, what, what, there's Voting some Ready weird Run was on bottom theory. and got what? mana screwed, and Aaron's on the bottom <laughs> and getting. This Look at these conspiracy theories. Conspiracy. You, know, you, you play too much magic online, Kenji. Oh That's just all I'm going to say. Pyramids <laughs> everywhere. Illuminati. Where's Worth? We need to blame him right now. This isn't yeah. worth. This is somebody else's doing. Oh, this is somebody else's doing. This is co some community Super League shenanigans. Yeah. Randy. <laughs> All right. So we have Aaron at five life here with the Den Protector. I mean, Aaron's just going to have to chump the, uh, the Gideon here. Mm -hmm. and, well, and any human, which the deck is mainly composed of, is going to be lethal. Yeah, and Gabby just has a declaration in stone, so... Oh, sure, right, well... Uh, Aaron is... I guess, oh, she bricks! Yeah, got nothing. So unlucky! Yeah, I oh, know. Man. I know. I mean, if she wants to draw another spell, she could declaration her own inspector. This you know, is true. Right? Because, like, you're not, you're not really losing too much value there. It's just a one-two. Well, I mean... Gabby could play around Dismember... That might be good. Not this member is a pretty powerful spell, but mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Aaron is at five. So. Yeah, he'd be able to dismember Gideon and take four. True. What does Aaron get back here? Ruin his path. And then dies. Unless Gabby just chooses not to do anything. Did you like uh, the card I named with the Infinite Obliteration game one? It was just Thief of Hope. Yeah, you stole I it all. I, I didn't steal anything. You just didn't play any good cards. And you soul shifted me, game dude. It wasn't even fair. Yeah. All right. And with that, it looks like Gabby is going to take the match 2-0 
over Mr. Aaron Forsyth, who had some predictable bad draws, seeing as how he is the bottom player. Oh, is, has the top player won every time? That's what I'm saying. Illuminati. No, no. The, the, the professor was the bottom player, right? That, he, won he was just throwing round. a wrench in it to, to make things look weird. You know? or, it's, or it's just completely random. But, I mean, may, maybe, <laughs> maybe that's just not possible. All right, fair enough. We'll come back <laughs> to the quote-unquote booth here of the Community Super League. We just finished match number four between Aaron Forsyth and Gabby Sparts. Previously, it was me versus Paul, Loading Ready Run versus Magic the Amateuring, and then the Professor versus Mr. Wedge to start things off. Uh, next up, we have the girlfriend bracket versus Marshall. Mr. Marshall, banana man. 4v1 man, sl- seems a little unfair. What's that? No. I said 4v1 seems a little unfair. 4v2? Oh, oh, oh the girl. Oh, the bottom mat. Oh, I see. Yeah. yeah you're yeah, right. Yeah. What in the world is going on here? I wonder if they're all playing together or if it's going to be like Loading Ready Run where they just send like a new champion every week. And they definitely have to send a new one because Graham did not get it done. Right, right. Yeah. Well, again. <laughs> Oh, the bottom team, I don't know. Yeah, so we have Esper Control versus Marshall Sutcliffe playing Goggles Ramp. Uh, who do you think is actually favored in that matchup? Uh, what are the, the deck lists again? They are Goggles Ramp versus Esper Control. Yeah. Ooh, man, I like the Ramp deck. But I always like the Ramp deck, even if Esper Control is probably going to be better. Yeah, well, uh, you, uh, like as a blue mage, I, I prefer the Esper deck. So this should actually be fun. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stay up and definitely watch this match. All right, let's go to ads. Don't go anywhere, folks. We're going to have the last match coming up very shortly. 